Hey, welcome. I got a fun little project going today. The tilt cylinders for the bucket on this backhoe, they leak, so I'm going to replace the seals. This is a Case 590 Super L that I picked up probably four or five years ago now. Had 7,000 hours on it, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the machine. It's, it's been great. Uh, I've moved all the dirt out of this hole that the shop is sitting in right now with it. I, I haven't had a lick of trouble with it other than hydraulic seals going out because I assume they've never been replaced. Shortly after I got the machine, I found online there was a company that actually sells complete seal kits for the machine. The nice thing is when it comes, it's in this little bag, one per cylinder. It's labeled, this is loader bucket tilt seal kit. So that's for these, I got two of them. So I'm gonna pull these cylinders off today and replace the seals. Alright, I got the cylinder off. Something that wasn't much of a surprise. This bushing hole here. I don't know, can you see? That's pretty egged out. There's only half the bushing here, basically, from there to there. The entire top of it's missing. I uh, pulled pieces of it out of here. Where did I set those? On the bench. Yeah, here we go. There's pieces of that bushing. So, I'm going to hit up the implement dealer, see if they got replacements for these. I wasn't surprised about this because that is the one pin on the entire machine that doesn't have a grease fitting on it, so you can't lubricate it. So, there's a screw here to keep the gland from spinning, so that's got to come out first. Now this is drilled for a face spanner. It's got pinholes here in the front. Well, after messing around for quite a while here, I can't get this to come loose with the uh, this adjustable spanner that I have. Uh, you just don't have enough length to get the torque on it and the pins pop out. So I'm going to make a spanner inch for this, a custom one. I've already done that. This is one I made for my dipper cylinder. I, I had to actually just cut it out with a torch and, and brazed in some hardened pins. Uh, that worked out okay. You got to have really good layout to make that work, but I managed it. The thing I don't like with this is you put some, put a lot of heat in those pins and and um, they don't uh, they don't stay hardened basically so i've got a piece of half inch that i'm going to cut out a wrench for this one and then what i'm planning to do is i'm actually going to drill and tap the holes i'm going to have the machine drill the holes in the right place then i'll drill them to the right size tap them and then i'm going to put bolts through and then use the lathe to cut down the the ends of the bolts to be the right size pin to fit in here and see if that'll work. The thing with that is this gives you a nice long uh, handle. I can put my square tubing on there and then I got plenty of leverage to break it loose. So that's the plan so I'm going to make that next. Well, apparently I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. 
here's uh here's what we got cut out nice relief for the cylinder my three holes Now you can see how this will fit. Oh, that's nice. Fits right in there. This is a, well, I always like using the CNC. It takes a little more time, but stuff fits perfect. Okay, this wrench fits real good. This should pull this right off. I can't do it here. I'll r either rip this vise out of the bench or I'll break the vise. I've got a much bigger vise down in my shed, so I'm gonna relocate everything down there. I got the base end of the cylinder here clamped in the vise. That's just a solid steel plate essentially, so I'm not worried about warping the tube if, as if I would grab it here. Got some two buys to keep it up more or less level with the buys. Now we found out if these bolts are going to shear off or not. Nice and easy. You want to protect the sides of the a little bit. The book even tells you just to use your X. Things loose. Okay, I got this bolt loose now so I can get it out. Now, one thing that I'm careful to do, I work on clean pig mat here and I keep everything oriented the way it came off the rod so that I don't mix anything up. Even this washer, if you can see it there, it's a tapered and it's uh, somewhat conical. So that was on that way, so it goes on the bolt like that. So, first thing you have to do is replace the inside seals on the head, gland, whatever you want to call it. So, I like to start from the dust ring out, work my way down in it. The wiper, you really don't have to be about it again you're replacing all of this stuff so there that came out all right lots of crud under that clean things as you go 
Alright, so I know the wiper, I know which way those go. Let's open this kit up. Okay, so there's the new wiper. They always go with this lip pointing out because they're supposed to clean the dirt off as the rod goes in. Now you gotta start paying attention to what you're getting out of here. Now, if you're using screwdrivers on this stuff, these are very old, well-used screwdrivers that are not very sharp. You really don't want to be scratching up the metal if you can help it. See, now I got my, I got a gap there, and I got my pick in behind there. Now I can just pry it out. Okay. So now this one I have to look at. This is the side I was prying on. You see it's open on the bottom. So now I need to find that seal in this kit. Looks like that one. Okay. So that one goes the gap down. Okay. So I just stack these up in the order I take them out so I know which way they go back in. Okay. I think all that's left in here is this bushing. These spacer bushings don't really have an orientation. Okay. All right, there's nothing else inside there. So now I'm gonna go wash this out in the sink with dish soap and hot water and get it good and clean on the inside before I install the okay, new parts. Cleaning these things is important. I found what I think is another seal in here. Oh yeah, sure is. go okay that's the way it came out it's this guy right here okay the gap side of the lip down okay I'm gonna go wash this again the reason I like to use real hot water in addition to dissolving the oil good the part gets hot and then when you blow it out with your air hose it doesn't take very long and all the any surface water that's left there just evaporates and the parts dry almost right away. I do this on automotive parts too. Uh, if you're cleaning up brake parts particularly, those clean up real nice in the sink with dish soap. Okay, I got clean hands, parts clean, I can put the new seals in. You need to lubricate them somehow. Uh, they recommend hydraulic oil. I just use Vaseline, it's compatible with the hydraulic oil and you don't absorb it as bad like the hydraulic oil. My hands will smell like hydraulic oil for two or three days if I use that. And you just gotta fish these guys in there. There we go, that one's in there where it needs to be. The open side was down. That's just going to be the same thing for this one. Looks like I got some dirt on there. I'm going to clean that off. They make a seal twister tool that makes this a lot easier. I need to buy a set of those. I just haven't. So I gotta do this the hard way. Get that side started. You don't wanna use the screwdriver points, edges against the new seal. smooth jaw you don't want to use the rough ones this works good sometimes no 
always be past the edges of the seal with the jaws. Then you can twist it like that. And that's what the commercial tool, the solar tool does, it twists them. Okay, now that lip's hung up, so I just gotta be real gentle. There we go. There. Get that clean. Install the new bushing, those are a piece of cake. Which you just tap all the way around real gentle. Until it's seated like that. Put a little lubricant in. Because we're going to put this on the rod. This is the O-ring and a backup seal. Or backup washer. So I just got to be careful not to mess these up or get them dirty. This is where these hook picks come in real handy. Get that started on the edge. Just pull it around real easy. You don't stretch it, and you can see that you don't roll it. And you can do the exact same thing with the O rings. Rod clean. Put that on. This is chamfered a bit so it'll fit right by the rod wiper. There we go. That's all there is to that one. Now the piston should be pretty easy. Get this opened up. So, looks like that's going to be that part, and maybe that one, that one, these two probably. This one might fit underneath there, we'll have to see here. Okay, that has no direction to it, so it's that. Now what I don't like, it's got a gap in it. All right. See what this looks like. Ooh. You want to be careful with these. Be real rough on the fingers if you poke yourself with one of those picks. They're sharp. They're real sharp. Exact opposite thing now. You can use that hook pick to pull it out. Alright, so this is both of those pieces, is what that's going to be. It varies on this machine. Uh, one of my cylinders it didn't have this double setup. Oh, outer one, that 
it's definitely this piece and then the piece of rubber. That rolled, so I'm gonna unroll it. That is the thing to watch out for these. You don't want a twist in the seals when they go in. Okay, so real careful, pick that guy up. Just hook it right in. That one's in. Okay, this one's interesting. This is the top one. Uh, you probably can't see that on the camera there, but there's a little stair step, like a zigzag cut in there. I assume they bonded that or something. And they made it. Yep, there it opens up, so you can actually put it on, I suppose. There we go. And this is the last new piece. This is another bushing, basically. Excellent. It went on that direction. And our bolt needs to go in. So they want you to use thread sealing on this. Alright, I'm going to take this down to the shed to torque it. I'm not carrying the camera down there again. Um, it'll just be the opposite setup. I'll be on the other side of the bench pushing down. Uh, this, this particular one is supposed to be torqued to 250 foot-pounds. So, that's what I'll do for that one. Uh, the bigger cylinders, like the dipper cylinder, I did that one. That one's 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. Um, I had to use uh, two torque multipliers stacked on each other to do that. Um, I'm not doing that today, I'm not, so I'm not going to go show that, but that's, that's how you deal with that one. Alright, this is more or less ready to go back in the tube. I got this torqued where it needs to be. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, I've had a lot better luck assembling these. Uh, you can see here this seal, maybe you can't see it here. See how much see how much that seal moves up and down. So that's a problem because that seal will catch on the chamfered lip inside the tube and it won't compress and it'll pull out and kind of be smeared on here. It won't seal right and it won't work. So what I'm going to use to solve that is this thing called the seal clasper. Uh, you can get these from Hercules. I found out about this by watching uh, Adam Booth on YouTube. His channel is ABOM79, A-B-O-M 79. Uh, he's how I found out about this thing, and it works really good if I can remember how to get it to open up again. That's, that's tightening. There we go. And I found it, it works even even good even on these little cylinders. Okay, hold on. I need to pull that. There we go. And then, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll... Well, that would be for a bigger diameter. I think we'll, we'll just use the spacer that's in there. You don't have to worry about this bushing, but the seal, you want it compressed in there real good. So you just put the sucker on there and give it some good torque. 
and just let it set a few minutes and it'll push that seal down, compress the rubber, compress that other seal in and it'll fit in the tube real easy and you won't damage it. So this is ready to go in. That seal is nice and flush now. So make sure it's clean and that rod and that gland are clean. While I was waiting, I cleaned the inside of the cylinder. Well, I didn't clean the cylinder. I checked to make sure it was and lubricated it. Well, it went. That oil on the face is wonderful. Next time I'll put a rag over the bottom port. That was neat. Now I'm about to get this out. Because now I need to lubricate this o-ring before I screw it all together. So it doesn't leak. I don't want to have to take this all apart again. Okay. There we go. Now I just got to go get my wrench, which I think I left down in the shed, and tighten this back up. lock screw lined up so I can put it in. Okay, I can't put all of this back together yet because I need that upper bushing that I, that's disintegrated in there, the one you can't grease. But I'm going to put the rod eye in with that pin. I'll put my hoses on so any further leaking that's happening over there will be contained. And it's getting about dark here. I like to work in the sunlight, which is why I got all the windows. So, I will finish the other one tomorrow. And then Monday, I can call about getting the bushings I need for that upper eye. It's about a week later, my bushings came in. I've got them in the freezer to shrink them down a little bit. It makes them a little bit easier to drive in here. I got the other three done already. I'll be right back with the last one. Of course the one we do on camera is the hardest one, but still went in all right. So there's no way that you could drill and get a zerk in here without compromising the strength of the boom at all. So if you got one of these machines with this pivot set up for the bucket, I know I'm going to take this apart probably every two or three years. I don't use it a lot, so that'll be fine. But I'll take this apart and put grease in here. I'm going to grease this now when I put it together.
Okay, I got everything put back together now. I had to change out these two hoses. I replaced them like a year or so ago. They got caught up on something, so the uh, basically the casing here is all tore up. That's not a big deal. It's a new hose that lasts a long time since I keep it indoors, but I figured I'd just get it replaced. I really like these caps. I'm going to save them. This is the first time I've ever seen threaded caps for hydraulic hose. That's excellent. So I got new grease pumped into all of this. I had cleaned those fittings out and everything. Uh, as far as the torque on those through bolts, just as tight as I can manage. Uh, I don't know what the real torque is. I'm not looking it up in the book. It'll be fine. So the only thing left to do, I'm going to pick it up, work all the air out of the cylinders, and I'm going to check and make sure my hoses don't interfere and get uh, pinched in here between the bucket. And she'll be done. So this hose here is coming over it's just gonna it would get pinched right here so I, I've got the boom is still holding this so I'm gonna loosen this hoses the other side even both of them are gonna get hit so I'll get things twisted around so it's straight and won't interfere That's pretty well it. If you had all your parts, it'd be an easy weekend project. I ran out of grease. I had bought some at the implement dealer. I thought I'd ask for Molly grease, but I didn't check it. They sent me home with regular, so I had to actually run out and get a tube down at the auto store today. Uh, I did top off my hydraulic oil, because you lose a lot when you're doing this, when you open it up. Uh, I use sawdust on my floor to pick up the oil. Works real, real good. You just leave it there for a week. It absorbs most of it. Sweeps right up. It's real easy to deal with. So I try to always save that whenever I'm using the table saw. I like to keep all that sawdust for that. So I got two great big trash bags of it from doing all the work in here. So overall, you get all the parts and you're ready to go. It's an easy weekend project. Uh, if you really needed the machine and you found those bushings were bad, you could grease that, put it together, and use it while you waited for your bushings. So it wouldn't take very long to change those out. That's all there is to it. It's pretty easy. Thanks for watching.